Welcome everybody to the Monday, March 25th meeting of the Conway Select Board and at 6.30 or though probably quite a bit after that will become a meeting of the joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and Finance Committee and we are also blessed with the presence of the Conway Personnel Committee. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, as, as well as um, numerous members of the community and the age age-friendly Franklin County and North Carbon Regional Action Plan people. Um, so uh, this is being recorded live on FCAT and the town website on Zoom. If for any reason those recordings fail, the meeting will still proceed live and in person. Call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of March 18. No issues or changes needed. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is uh, approving the account's payable warrants in the amount of $500,918.16, the payroll warrants in the amount of $130,254.48, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $32,150.05. I'll just note that the reason for the very large numbers in the payable warrant is that these are the quarterly school expenses. Um, so once every once every three months, there's really a large one like that. And um, I've gone through them. I've had all my questions satisfactorily answered. I don't know about the rest of you. Um, yeah, I move to approve the warrants. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Um, meetings attended by select board members? None for me. Uh, yeah, none since our last meeting. Uh, been in meetings every day, um, but but I'm here now. Uh, public comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, new business. First item: the age-friendly five-year plan for regional action plan for the Franklin County and North Cabin. Cabin. Um, with us are. Meg Ryan and Rachel Stoller from Furcog. Should we come sit at the table or should we talk from here? Um, the microphone is there, so if you talk from there. You sure. got this. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks, Mary. Um, we are coming tonight to give you an update. Um, you are the governing board that signed on to the uh, local regional age and dementia friendly initiative three years ago or so um, and we published an action plan based on the um, survey of needs we did a couple of years ago so we wanted to just to let you know um, I know you guys have a very active um, working group for the mass in motion grant that's supporting this age and dementia friendly uh, work and I also want to recognize that there's there's a lot of other um, entities, the Council on Aging, um, et cetera, who are already doing age and dementia friendly work. But we wanted to go over this regional plan. Um, it's, you know, a collaboration with LifePath. Um, so I think I gave you all a copy. Um, and if you just go through the first few pages, um, it's organized by the eight domains of livability. And what I wanted, what we wanted to do tonight was to just briefly go through um, the action items for each of the eight domains that the steering committee um, identified as actions that we want to work on regionally um, to give you a chance to think about um, how Conway may want to participate in some of these action steps. You're already doing some of them, so. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things with the age and dementia friendly work is that whatever we do is not just for older citizens, but benefits everyone in town. You put that ramp in and it's not just for an older person with mobility issues, it's for somebody who might be disabled, it's for a young family with um, a stroller, it's for that high school athlete that uh, had an injury and is now on uh, crutches for a little while. So, um, Domain one is uh, outdoor spaces and buildings. We're on page nine. Page nine. Um, uh, one of the 
you know, improving access and making sure everything is physically accessible is really important. Um, the FERCOG planning department is working on a lot of these items. Um, one of the things is to uh, note that you do have some information handed to you this evening about ADA grants that might be available for some of these um, actions. We want to. Uh, you could do an ADA audit for your rec and public facilities. You could do a walkability audit um, for your town. Uh, you might be able to improve things by participating in complete streets. I don't know. Do, are you guys, um, uh, do you have a complete streets? Um, I don't know about the plan, but complete streets plan? was done here a number of years back. Uh -huh. So I, I don't know if it, you know. If it's revisited every decade or something like that, probably. Do you know anything about complete I don't. Streets? I'm sorry. Thank you. That's okay. Yeah. We have a member of our planning department here with us tonight. So, um, another thing is to look at making sure that whatever work you do on town open spaces considers uh, age-friendly elements, and to um, implement the age-friendly recommendations for many open space and rec plans that you have. And I forgot to find out where, if you guys have a current open space and yes. rec plan. You do. Yeah, great. So that's a helpful thing to have. Um, domain two, transportation, is a perennial problem throughout the region. Um, one of the things we found was that there are resources that people don't know about, so just getting the information out about that is important. And another action is to launch, launch a transit ambassador program, and the FRTA has actually hired a woman named Elizabeth Cork, who is doing that program. She's available to come up. I believe the Mass in Motion uh, committee is considering having her up to talk to us. So this week. Yeah, she's actually coming this week. So it's helpful to know how to access the services that are already there. And then the other thing is that a lot of the need isn't met by formal transportation things. So getting more volunteer drivers is important as well. Actually, the FRTA Med Ride program and the Life Path Ride for Health program both need more volunteers. Um, and looking at a neighbor to neighbor or um, a village organization to look at whether that's a helpful um, thing for transportation as well. Rachel, do you want to talk about housing? Um, sure. I'm going to just keep going. Yeah, I'll yeah, jump briefly. Happy to jump, jump in. in just to hear a different voice. So exactly. uh, the, third, the, the, the third domain is housing. Um, and housing tends to be very expensive, uh, you know, to build housing, but there are a variety of options that um, can help with housing that aren't quite as expensive. So um, uh, looking at zoning ordinances, um, advocating that for zoning that it supports more affordable and accessible housing, including accessory dwelling units or multiple units or a conversion of large single family to duplex. Um, Participating and advocating for state funding that supports more affordable housing options in rural areas and working with towns to create uh, housing that is suitable to older adults. Um, so not all of it is about constructing new housing, but um, it can also be about looking at what housing stock you have and figuring out are there ways to improve it and make it um, accessible for older adults as well as younger families. And, and I Think, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys already have zoning in place where you can uh, create a, a second unit out of a single family home. As and, a right. Yeah. As a right and ADUs in the back ground, backyard. And those are also very helpful to, to make sure there's enough housing in a town. So that is one of the actions. Um, social isolation and um, the ability to participate socially is a major health indicator. Um, it, there's so much isolation uh, since increase since pandemic. So creating partnerships between older adults and youth organizations like the Council on Aging and schools, um, creating or supporting existing marketing campaigns for the COA or senior center use. Um, 
a Facebook ad can be a pretty inexpensive and um, helpful thing if, if you have um, something you want to advertise. Um, intergenerational discussion groups. Um, Greenfield Community College has started one um, with, between students and older adults that anyone's welcome to participate in. Um, making sure that people know about Life Path's Phone Pal program. And then thinking about whether you want to um, support the growth of village initiatives. Um, a lot of the towns in the area have um, neighbor to neighbor. I think Waitley uh, started one recently and there's been some discussion about maybe participating, but having enough volunteers to help run the program um, can, can be hard to find. Domain five, respect and social inclusion. Um, making sure that people are aware of uh, problems that may prevent participation. Provide, providing anti-age bias education um, is something that I've been doing a lot. Uh, and there's now a recording of one if anybody's interested. Providing technical assistance about age and dementia friendly policies, systems, and especially the built environment changes. If you're gonna repaint something, you're gonna spend that money anyway. You may as well paint in a color that's more helpful rather than preventative for someone with dementia or sight problems. And, and there are resources available for considering that. Um, providing dementia awareness and uh, making sure that everyone knows about the resources for elder abuse. Civic participation and employment, um, domain six is uh, an area of, of um, concern for a lot of older adults. One action step, um, encouraging towns to create a senior tax work off program, you guys did recently, so I applaud you. Um, keep us posted on how, how the process of setting it up is going, because we'd love to share that with other towns in the area. And then uh, making sure that public meetings are accessible, as you are doing with uh, recording this, having the OWL so that people can participate virtually as well as in person. And then thinking about pathways for meaningful employment for older adults. Communication and information is uh, very important. Um, we've noted how hard it can be to get the information out to people. There are so many different pathways. Um, but towns that have a newsletter, as you guys do, it's usually very well used. Um, so using that as a model is very helpful. And then think about um, whether you have a current municipal vulnerability planning uh, process happening now or plan current do. in place. We do. Great. MVP? Well, we need to redo it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah. we've been good with that the past few years. This oh, yeah. Is yeah they any, this is very much badly when you see MVP stuff. <laughs> Only with incredible help from the fur dog. <laughs> right, Alison? Yes. Yeah. Happy to be here for you. <laughs> All of the departments. <laughs> and then working on making sure that older people have an act, have ability to access um, the world digitally, whether it's providing devices, education on how to use them, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that is a, a, an issue both in communication and information. And then again, in health services and community supports, a lot of older people can struggle to use uh, patient portals or to make vaccine appointments. Things that can actually often only be done online. So having the support there. Um, and uh, as Phil pointed out, you do, um, you are working on digital literacy with the grant with the South County Senior Center, so. And then advocating for more uh, primary care practice um, support for, for portals. And then use the Department of Public Health Health Equity Survey to get information about what the older adults here actually need. Um, the department Rachel and I work in at the FERCOG is will be um, helping you find information from that 
and handing it to you. So, um, then think about whether you have uh, the enough of a program to identify and support residents who ha may have access and functional needs during emergencies. Um, you've had more than your share of floods. Who do you need to worry about helping get out of a house um, because they can't do it on their own? Uh, some towns have a very formal system. Others have a very informal system. Is, is the one that Conway has, has adequate to your needs? Um, something to consider. It is very informal. It's very informal, yes. Well, if you're ever interested or your EMS people are interested, there are a couple of different actual um, models that can be shared. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to see them just yeah. to have an idea of how we could. Yeah, know, absolutely. Polly in particular has a very specific uh, and useful database. They send out um, a survey with the census information every year, so you voluntarily opt in to let somebody know and the, the data is kept private and protected with only certain people having access. Um, so that's that's the gist of it. You know, we were looking for things that, that had um, organizations that could be the lead on it and things that might we might be able to make progress in, in five years, which is the length of this plan. Um, so we're, we're here really to offer support and help for anything that sounds good. You know, we don't necessarily expect a response right this minute. Um, and I, I do want to uh, highlight that your Mass in Motion group is also working to uh, make the, the town a better place for people to age in, in place. So. Were, were, we, were, were we talking to the board about an ADA grant? Well, the one, it, it, the mod grant that I'm looking into is for the lift for the town hall. So the lift and, because um, this, this building needs a lift. And then um, the other thing that we've been talking about that I would really like to see is the automatic door, the, just the front entrance to this building. Yeah. Is, it's a fire door. It's the, the automated, the, those little blue buttons that you mm -hmm. press. Um, we have the we have the plan for all that that was put yeah. in place. Right now, to be honest, it's just a matter of getting to it, and there is some funding even still for it for ADA. I think there's like 4,500 still left. Those from. doors are like 10, aren't they? Doors. I'd have to, you know, now yeah. they probably are. When this was done, <laughs> I think, a little less. Last time, I think I remember hearing that there were over 10. But the plan that Conway did. Um, when Tom was here, you know, reviewed sizes of the doorways and making sure every, the widths of everything, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we have the plans for that. It's just getting to it now. So. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other things that, um, in looking through this, that jumped out at you as things that you hadn't thought about before that seemed interesting or that you would want more information on? Uh, and again, you don't have to answer that right this moment on the spot, unless something did jump out at you, we can take that back and make sure you get the information you need. The local community-based transportation thing mm -hmm. is something it's, um, just, like everything else, if you really want to solve your problems, you just got to look within your own town and just solve it yourselves. It's just, um, what we just need help is with funding. Um, Funding and enough volunteers. Yeah. You, you know, every town, every individual only has so much bandwidth. So that's a limit, limited resource as well. Yeah. And we recognize that, especially in small towns, which is why we tried to put together this regional plan to help support mm -hmm. smaller places with, with less bandwidth. Um, and then when we did a previous survey and we found that, um, what was it, almost, almost half of all seniors in town, and that that's the other thing when you look at your data that says statewide it's 17 percent senior population you know your town is 40 something percent uh, uh, you know that when when uh, but but we looked and the the, the 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 one the the data point that always strikes out at me is that the number the, the large percentage of seniors in our town that said that they were so that they were isolated that they didn't have anybody to call for help mm -hmm. um, and those are things I would like to really address. So, I, yeah. Yeah, that's that. That one takes some creative thinking. So. Yeah. 
Well, we will uh, keep you posted on what's happening with, with the Asian Dementia Friendly Planning. And um, any other thoughts or questions? Housing. Housing. Yes. State funding, the life path options for grants, um, not for just new housing, but also for the repairs needed on existing. There is, they do have um, some uh, money and help for uh, home repairs through LifePath. Um, so people can be directed to call them. I can get more information to you guys. Yeah, more information is fantastic. Absolutely, we'll do that. Um, they, they have been trying a home share program, um, but there is a great imbalance of, uh, you know, trying to match up younger people who are looking for housing with older people who are struggling to maintain their independence for whatever reasons. Um, and I think there were a lot of younger people looking and not very many older people um, wanting to wanting the service. So they're, they're trying to figure out if, if that is um, something that can really be worthwhile in addressing. I mean, housing costs are brutal. They are. Brutal for everyone, so. Any of you have any questions for me? So I just, the only comment I'd make, I'm, I'm Thad Bennett, I'm on the age-friendly group. And just, I know the key here is that you've got to pass this, right, as a select board? No, you already did. Not, you already did. Yeah. So you're just, you're just, just catching up. We're just giving you an update. So the great thing I would say is that our little group has had great support from um, these wonderful people. And our, the key is there's too much here. Um, and picking out what's going to help Conway, I think, is the key. And so you got a little local group working at it with backup from a bigger group. Perfect model. Thanks. So. Just to be clear, there's a mass in motion grant that Rachel administers that Conway opted into that gives you a small amount of money to support your age and dementia friendly in it, um, endeavors here in town, just for people who might not have that background. And the mass in motion is meant to um, be sort of leveraged to incorporate age-friendly thinking into broader town planning. So that could be uh, open space and recreation planning, or comprehensive planning, or complete streets planning, MVP. Any of those um, plans that towns work on are um, are improved by incorporating age-friendly thinking into them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We'll be back at some point. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I will note on the way <laughs> out of my seat that the um, regional mass in motion towns are going to have a, a, a regional get together here in Conway at your beautiful library. We're going to yes. have it catered locally in, in uh, May. So thank you, May Conway, 16th. for hosting. Thank you. Next is creating the rain garden, the MVP grant. I should have already gotten it, but yeah, there's an updated drawing on oh. the second page and some more. Oh, okay, yeah. one, page, one for each. Yeah, I got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, it's one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's the maintenance information for the plan. You don't have to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Well, hi again. I'm Allison. I'm a planner of the Berg Um I'm here with Cynthia Long Singer, uh, Paul May Conway, and Living Fruits Garden Design, and also Kate and Kendall from Paul May Conway are doing this on Zoom. Um, so the short story is I have a good chunk of funding with the current MVP action grant to do an educational activity with school age kids. And I was thinking it might be fun to teach them about something that they could do in their own sphere of influence, which a good option could be uh, rain gardens or teaching them about the urgent need to capture stormwater runoff. Um, so my proposal is to do a classroom-based activity to teach them about how rain gardens work and then to try and do one on town-owned property so they can have a part in it and then also see it 
after it's done and then you know observe it over the years and see how it all works. Um, so our we do have a bit of a time constraint. It would need to be done by June 30th. Um, myself and some members of Longley Conway went down to the South River Meadow to see if anything could be done there, but I think more observation on how the water comes down off the road would need to be done to do one effectively there. So if we want to get it done by June 30th, the easiest spot to do it at would be the town offices. Um, Cynthia put together a design two years ago before the ramp went in, um, but then I think there wasn't funding or that hasn't been done yet. So this could be a good opportunity to get that project uh, completed. Um, so Cynthia is available to rework the design um, based on the size of the ramp. We would have to do a little bit more work with where the pipe would be sited. Um, but we would be able to do most of the work and then have the kids involved in the planting. So yeah, those are our thoughts. The ramp is in, though. Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, the ramp is in. Um, and the pipe would not go under the ramp. It would go around the side. Do you there is going to be just so you know um, at this end of it right oops right here there's going to be a railing put up okay yeah that's fine you're talking about burying it in the soil, not to cut the soil. There's a little bit of a slope there. There's a lot of a slope. Okay. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, in revisiting this as just a rain garden without all the other plantings that we had um, originally proposed, um, I've you know I've looked at the site again and looked at notice that the new ramp is larger than the original ramp so that's why I drew it in red a little bit bigger because it's a little bit larger than the original um, and this steep slope um, is eroding the, the mulch is running off so I probably want to do some you know lay in some uh, stones on the top surface just to hold the soil back from washing off. Um, but other than that, you know, it would just be a buried pipe that's connected to the downspout and that is, you know, it's uh, sloping down to below the berm um, at the base of the uh, rail. And, and then there would be a depression dug out and I'm thinking that the depression would um, be, the perimeter of it would be raised on the, on the part, the front of it, which isn't, there'd be the slope and then the rain garden and then the, the material that's dug out would be like a raised rim to make it a little bit even deeper and also to use the material. And then we could plant into the material that's dug out, we could plant um, a few wetland-loving plants that can tolerate dry spells as well. So that's that's the proposal. So is the tree part of it as well? Well, I mean, unless, unless you approve a tree. I mean, uh, Ron was opposed to the tree when we originally proposed it. Um, I don't know how people feel about a tree now, but we'd still love to put a shad tree in there, which is what is in the um, the town common. I now understand the library triangle has three shad trees in it, and the Veterans Memorial planting that we're going to be doing is going to have two more <coughs> shad trees, so it'll sort of be a, a theme on our Main Street yeah. I think the only issue was the maintenance, was the mowing, because right now they can just get in and... Right, right. So putting a tree would make it a little bit more difficult. Right. That's the only issue. Right. Yeah. We thought about, instead of having the downspout go directly into the ground, using a rain catchment barrel, um, because we, we have the planting beds, right? 
So if you had a raiding catchment barrel, you could have an overflow for the groundwater or the water that goes down down the slope, but then also have that barrel to water the plants and the and the beds. Well, you could do that. My experience with rain barrels is that they fill up mm -hmm. and they overflow and they splash your building, right. which is what we're trying to avoid. Um, and with you know the kind of torrential rains that we had, mm -hmm. they're also really hard to use. You have to elevate them because the spigots at the bottom. I see you nodding your head. Mm -hmm. I have, have a lot, lot of experience with rain barrels. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they really are very functional. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. they're like. <laughs> we have them. They say it sounds good. The pipe that I would put in would have perforations in it, so it would be releasing water in in the pathway of the pipe. And I was even thinking I could loop it a little bit more through the front part of that mound. Into the beds? Yeah, right. yeah, to, to let it, you know, percolate through there. Right, with one, just one of those percolating hoses that you could put in the bed, right? Something like that. Well, it's, it's a pipe that has perforations in mm -hmm. it. So when the water runs through, it, it leaks out it. through the perforations. Okay. So, well. Yeah, so you could have a water in the whole bed there. Yeah, right? And then yeah. overflow yeah. to the Right, garden. exactly. Yes. Because the whole point of rain, move, moving the rainwater is to use it and to slow it down and, and to deconcentrate it, you know, to disperse it more. Um, so it's not, you know, just one spout that's washing away. I mean, I noticed even the gravel below that was pushed off and, and the landscape fabric was exposed from the water flow. Um, so. so do we know about whether the existing planting bed right, right next to the ramp, is that something that they want that Ron and the highway department want to keep doing? Do you mean in terms of, it was, this was, my understanding was that um, that was all planned even before I got here and they, they were ready to go with it and they did the plantings, but it wasn't, you know, it's, it's supposed to be like a ma as maintenance free as possible planting, is my understanding. <laughs> But I don't know that, I mean, I don't think anybody's weighed in with any kind of formal, this is what we want to see in front there. Yeah, yeah. because my recollection was that he, he would be okay if that was, if he was relieved, he would be happy if he was relieved of, I, I believe that it was there, there were needs to water it in July and August and that that was a problem, or not a problem, but that that was something that would be okay if they didn't have to do. It, anything that makes more, Maintenance work for them is definitely, so, I mean, I, like, you know, less maintenance work is better. <laughs> I mean, and that, the, the, the thing about that is that that has a greater street level visibility, you know, p p right. pedestrian visibility, sure. um, and that that might be a better location for your plan than, I mean, it's, it's already existing, clearly defined. And you mean the, the bed? Are you talking the slope? The bed, the bed. We have to have the rain garden lower, right? Yeah, the rain garden needs to because the lower. water goes down, so you can't. Yeah, do it has it. to yeah. be below. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the plantings would be around the depression. I'm not thinking of I, what I'm thinking is filling the depression most of the way with gravel maybe some decorative stones on top, you know, some like river rocks, Polish river rocks or something. So you, that's, that's what would be filling the basin and then around the perimeter of that would be the plants. And there'd be taller plants against the mound and low plants across the front. And probably the um, size of this would be bigger than what's shown. Yeah, yeah. It would be, it would extend, you know, more out into this area. I'm assuming that there isn't anything underneath there that would keep one from digging down. Well, we would 
definitely want to call Dixie and mm -hmm. make sure that there's no utilities or anything under there. Yeah. And the bees, they're concerned about at the grammar school. <laughs> I saw that too. I was just thinking of Veronique going in the office. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, that I, mean, I, I mean, they're, they're, but it's not going to have the same population and accumulation of children that you would have at the grammar school. But I, I mean, we have them anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. There's bees in my backyard. Yes. Yeah, exactly. um, honestly, if they stay, you know, outside the office, I'd be happier. <laughs> so that is the thing, though. Every year, there's one or two kids that are really allergic to bees, things, and. Um, and it was like 10 years ago that we got a grant, the school committee got a grant for planting a few fruit trees. I think we planted a couple apple trees, maybe three of them. Mm -hmm. The idea was, oh, in the spring it'd be flowering and in the fall it would be fruiting. Well, in the spring when it flowered, the kids all got stung by bees. <laughs> and by the fall, all the bears ate all the, bee, all the apples. So <laughs> bee balls so everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they actually removed two of those trees already. Right? so close to the playground the kids were getting stung. Mm -hmm. My understanding about the bees is that there's um, hornets that live, you know, yellow jackets that live in the field. Mm -hmm. And that oh, that's really, yes. yeah, Ooh. that's really the problem with mm -hmm. the bees that they're worried mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. You know, because the kids are playing games right. in the field and they're getting into the nests and yeah. getting stung. Yeah. But you know, pollinate. Those aren't what pollinator gardens draw. I mean, those those insects like fruit and sugary drinks and things like that. So that's perfect at an elementary school, you know, to attract them. But um, but the pollinators that we would be attracting are are like bumblebees and honeybees and. You know, um, some of the bees don't even sting. You know, some types of like bumblebees, only the females can sting. So, and and so, if the existing planting bed um, closest to the road is still going to stay the way it is, then you're not going to have bees right next to people on the ramp, right? Because it'll just it'll be like uh, in the it, center it there. It would be yeah yeah. It, it would be down below the yeah. So it's not like anybody's going to be rubbing up against plants that have bees on them. Yeah, yeah, and and they won't be blooming all the time. They're perennials, so they'll, you know, I'll probably uh, select a bunch, you know, plants that bloom in different seasons. So there'll be some things that bloom in the fall and some things that bloom in the spring. You know, winter, winter good looks too. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm thinking some some forbs in the front, you know, because they like moisture. And the grasses are sort of a natural with, with water on it, so yeah, they look nice. And, and speaking of like safety, we would probably have the site at least halfway done so that when the kids got there, they could see the pipe laid out and they would be involved in the planting, but they wouldn't be doing like a lot of digging or anything. Mm -hmm. Clear that all right, the the digging would be done. Yes, yeah. and the pipe would be in, but I'm thinking maybe have them hook up. Do the final hookup to the to the downspout or something because that's kind of an easy. Can you get someone on the roof? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so no great. one needs to be on the roof, right? Well, Adam's always yeah, here. Pass out the pickaxes. Yeah. Uh, send Buddy up with the line. Yeah. Yeah. Send Buddy up. Yeah. Sorry, you're gonna have something. Oh no, I just um, I was gonna say I think it's a great idea, and I um, you know pending the approval by the grammar school, which I can't see why they wouldn't want to participate in this. I'd like to make a motion that we have Colony Conway go forward with building a rain garden in front of town offices. Second. All well, in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, fingers crossed for yes from the school. And <laughs> we know people there. We can talk to them. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you. I'll make you a co-host. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Are we going to do full textual? Um, yeah, so you want to call your meeting to order? Yes. And um, you can also call the personnel committee meeting to order. Um, well, we'll do the tech budget first, and then we'll go right into the um, job description.
appreciate it. My good stuff. Good. I make a motion to call the Finance Committee meet to order and join with the Honorable Select Board of Congress. Second. All in favor? Aye. Roy, do you vote? Aye. Okay. It carries Aye. four out. Aye. Thank you, Roy. So I make a motion to. Let's call the person up. We're doing them all at right. once. Well, yeah, we're going to do them concurrent. 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 All right. All right. I, as chair of the personnel committee, I'd like to make a motion to start a concurrent meeting of the personnel committee. I second. Vote. Vote. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, I like. I may make a motion to approve the. Finan Conway Finance Committee meeting minutes, jointly with the Honorable Select Board for May 18th as presented. Anyone care to second? Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, carries 4-0, oh, thank you. So, uh, you know, we're, we're here tonight with, uh, we're here with us tonight. Yes. Franklin Tech Superintendent Rick Martin. Um, like, nice that we can be in the same room again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess you, you have your yep. presentation you wish to make. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm going to just review and kind of target how the budget would impact Conway and then just give you an overview on where we are in the budget process. Um, I'm going to share my screen, and it's a budget book that was sent to you earlier. Let's see, here we go. I am able to share my screen, that's good news. We're off to a great start. <laughs> All right, um, what you have is a budget book, but what's more importantly is we, be, we provide the budget book electronically to you. So to make it easy to navigate, uh, the first place we look, we get a table of contents with a clickable link. So I go to the sources and uses of funding, which is this sheet right in front of us. I can blow that up for the screen for those that need to see it better online. Um, and what this is, is basically how we get our money. And this is a 50 page document, so I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, if you can't sleep at night, be more than happy to go through all the blue links. Um, they'll put your rate to sleep, trust me, I put it together. Um, the assessment to the town is the first one. As you can see, we trend over the last five years at a 3% increase. And that's pretty, you know, and that's the same for this upcoming year. Uh, that doesn't go up or down because we're utilizing our excess and deficiency to offset the next year's budget, as you can see down in line number eight down here. And that number was certified at 580000 for this year, so that helps to offset it. Um, how does it impact Conway? So assessment to the town. So all you got to do is click on anything in blue. If you click on it, it will go right to that sheet. All right, so if I go on Conway's up top, you had seven students right here in the first row. And when I look at that, um, and I scroll all the way over, you're at about $18,857 per pupil. Now that's a per pupil expenditure that's dictated to us from the state, as many of you may be aware. So what the state feels is that the town of Conway is just as wealthy as Wellesley, Wayland, Weston, Dover, Sherman, and the most wealthiest towns in the state. That's what the state formula dictates for the town of Conway. We all know by be being out here that is that's not the case. You were about to say a more appropriate word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very well played. <laughs> um, our average for all 19 member towns is down below at $12,252. So it fluctuates based on your income, what they perceive your property value to be, and every two years they do equalized valuation. So that's just some of the formula. They won't tell us how they do everything unless they would actually have to give us a lot more money for, um, per town. So. On the next thing, as you, all you got to do is just click to the top left link, and that'll get you right back to where we were, sources of funding. So the, the trend for the town of Conway, how, how's it going, it's trending for Conway. So I just click on this chart here, it will take me to a four-year trend. And I go here, Conway, you had four students, ten students, nine students, and seven students. So you dropped by two students. 
So as you go to the far right hand column, you'll notice your assessment went from 171,000 down to 132. Not because we want to be nice, but you have two less students. Mm -hmm. So it's a per pupil expenditure. What we are expecting, I always do this every year, to try to give the town the heads up what might be coming down the pike. Um, right now, we have two students in their senior year that will more than likely graduate from Conway. We have three applications. Mm -hmm. We're looking at maybe eight students for next year. So you're kind of right in that same ballpark that you've always been in. Um, and then I am going to scroll back up to the top. And debt service, uh, that's our, um, that's that 15 year bond windows and doors project we, we did. Um, that's about eight years into the making. And how does it affect Conway? So I click on the blue link and I go to Conway and I look right down here, it's about $6,267. So that's done every two years. Um, that's going to fluctuate for the town of Conway a few hundred dollars, maybe every year, maybe a hundred bucks, for some towns 80 bucks, it just depends. It's not that much fluctuation uh, per year in, that fi in the life of the 15 year bond. Uh, the next um, chapter 78, you've probably heard a lot about this, I'm assuming at this point in the year. Chapter 78, as you can see, we have increased about $500,000 each of the last four years. Look at this last year, $17,000. Mm -hmm. Even though our enrollment went up from 560 to 571, they put us into whole homeless. Now how did that happen? When enrollment goes up, you're supposed to be out of whole homeless. We've been out of whole homeless for the last five years. Mm -hmm. So how does that happen? Well, they didn't in they didn't increase the educational budget at the state level, they actually decreased it. But to make it look like an increase from political points, they took the whole homeless money that is designated outside of the operating budget for the education and they put it into the budget. Mm -hmm. So what happens, it makes it look like you have an overall educational increase, but these are the results. Of course we didn't get an, in, an overall educa education increase. I try to explain a little bit about that when you click on that tab right here, the chapter 78, we get a little bit more. I don't go into great detail so that the state doesn't fire me. Um, but if you wanted to find out more, these are external links all through. There's like two or three hundred external links. So if you want to really, again, can't sleep at night, you click on an external link and it will um, take you to the state website. And if you want to learn all about Chapter 70, right here, all the requirements and net aid, that will take you right there. So I click back on the Chapter 70 and take me right back here. The DOR cherry sheet, for those that are familiar, the Department of Revenue cherry sheet, I click that on and how it impacts Franklin County Tech. But this is also a teaching tool, this budget. It will help you identify your local school districts and where they're getting their money from, which I think is important. Because uh, we're all taken from the same pool of money. If I go down here, now if you look at these numbers, it's that same number we had in our budget. You'll see this number in our budget too, the 855,000 regional school transportation budget. If we go to the cherry sheet, Department of Revenue, and this is real easy to do, so if you're just able to follow me for about 20 seconds, you'll get this. You go to the top, all regional schools, you click. You can go down to whatever school you want. Franklin County Tech, Frontier, doesn't make a difference. You click on Franklin County Tech, you press submit, that's it. So the same numbers we have in our budget appear right here, all right? So that's important to know because um, I've been doing this a long time and there are school districts who don't report out the accurate money they're receiving. So if you ever wanna double check, it's good thing to do right here. And as you can see, we go from year to year here, we have a drop of 60, 70,000 in regional transportation. So there's another cut that we had to endure. Um, we weren't counting on that. We were just gonna budget the 917 with a 0% increase and see what the governor gives us. Not only did we get an increase, we got $70,000 less 
with a higher student population and we added another bus. Didn't make sense. So um, that's our world every year with Frontier. <laughs> yep. Well, that's the you know the things you can control and can't control. So I just went over the regional transportation numbers right here. You saw that here, right? Um, our non-member towns is how we had to make up the difference. So these are, you know, you saw your assessment at eighteen thousand and change. Non-member towns averaged twenty-five thousand um, dollars. And so, so those students, we used 35 non-member students and that we offset that increase right there in that budget. Um, and the other ones didn't change much as um, we already talked about, if anyone has any questions around those, that's not too high. So it's $15.3 million, how do we spend that money? Um, we do run an evening school, we do other things, we have COLA, so our district leadership and administration went up slightly. We added the Dean of Students a few years ago to address our increased population. Um, this is a deceiving number. Instructional services look like they've gone down a few hundred thousand dollars, but what happened in the previous year's budget, um, we weren't uh, confident we were gonna receive a very competitive grant uh, to uh, start our evening program, so we put the cost of the evening coordinator and the instructors into that particular budget. Um, we did get the grant, and so now we took those out of the next year's budget. So it looks like uh, instructional services drop, but it really is not. Um, what is an increase is in student services here. You'll see that gone up $100,000. Uh, the reason for that is because, as everyone's well aware, the extinction of the ESSA grants for all of the school districts, towns, and municipalities is in effect for next year. We were very careful over the last five years or four years not to put a lot of salaries into that. So we are going to be applying for the SRO grant that comes up at the COPS grant, so we hopefully that will just recover itself so we didn't have to go back to that again. When I look back at where we are on the table of contents here, if I just scroll, I know the budget a little bit quicker, so I might take someone a little bit longer to get there. Uh, evidently it's taking me a while. Um, <laughs> If I get right to the grants, and I think this is important, these are all the grants every school district gets. These are called your entitlement grants. And if you wanted to, we're not doing this tonight, look at all the links in blue, ignore them for tonight. Again, um, can't sleep. Um, this explains all your entitlement grants, what they're used for. I wanna um, give you guys an idea of what we spend it on. So we have our Perkins grant money for our vocational programs. That's 136,000 right here. What we bought it on is all explained in the paragraphs. Because sometimes in a budget, we haven't done the grants in past years, but given that there's a, the extinction of the ESSA money, we thought it was important to show you how we spent all that. Because those are the same type of questions you can ask your own school districts as well. So our ESSA grants are explained here. Here's the first one we got in 2020. The typical things everyone else bought, you know, uh, from the air filters, sneeze guards, the foggers, all that kind of fun stuff. We spent it on that. The next grant that we um, had the COVID relief fund, 77,000, again, nurse office, desk shields, that kind of stuff. The next one we received is 386,000. Ours aren't as large as your comprehensive school districts because we're only grades nine through 12, we're not K through 12, so they're gonna get a larger allocation. So ours was right here, 386. Um, not anything that stands out, but just things that we needed to do to be able to keep our school open, like big outdoor tents and things like that so we could run a classroom. Uh, then the big one came, the ESSA 3 grant. And that's when I talked about the school resource officer that get, get in, put in here, that's right here I meant. This is the school adjustment council we put into that grant. We then, at this next year, are moving that into one of the entitlement grants, the Title II, uh, I mean the Title I grant, and the Special Education grant. So that salary is not gonna affect our operating budget. That was the key, that's it, the salaries. We didn't tie anything up in our salaries because we knew it was coming to an end. Um, and with that, here's all of the entitlement grants. This is what every school district outside of Perkins pretty much receives. 
So this is what we receive, just so you know, because people wonder, well, how do you do everything with just that operating budget? Well, we get entitlement money that's off of the books. It's off of the operating um, assessment for the towns. That's for every school district, not just Franklin County Tech. What's not for every school district is our competitive grants. This is stuff we chase. This is competitive. Without this, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff that we do. Oh, since 2014, we have received over $9 million in competitive grants. That enables us to do programs that I think benefit the community, such as this is our new veterinary clinic that we have up here. Now, those students that are from Conway that go to Smith for animal science and you're paying $30,000 for the tuition cost and $30,000 for transportation can come to Franklin County Tech for $18,000. That makes a big difference, and one of the motivating factors of us doing this program was coming here about seven years ago, and you were stuck with, I think, four or five students at a large cost, and so I started to explore what can we do. So in the end result is um, a veterinary clinic um, and an animal science program. The other thing that we were able to do is, this is just got built. This is our aviation hangar for our new aviation mechanic technician program. So we're real excited about that to start in the fall. That came 100% out of competitive grants. So no operating costs to the towns. So those are some of the things in our budget that I wanted you to take a look at. Um, you, I, you might be interested to know that this, this upcoming fiscal year for the first time in memory, uh, we, have, we have no kids signed up for Smith Book. <laughs> Well, they're probably coming to us, which is which is cost efficient. I mean, it's not that we're better than Smith Book. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that we're right down the street. Is you're a member of town, yes. you're going to be able to pay less. Um, the last part. So I don't want to drag this on. I think I'm just going to go the important parts that stand out in the budget, if you don't mind, so I can be done in about two minutes, and then you can take any questions that, that you want. Line 10 and line 11, the ones that would stand out if I were you. All right, and they are the asset acquisition Siemens project. That's a 15-year power performance contract um, that we received for 13 new HVAC rooftop units, new boilers, energy efficient systems at about $500,000 a year. We knew that was coming to a close. Um, so, and so we put that money into our capital stabilization, which has been averaging about $250,000. We do have nearly a 50-year-old building, and what's happening is um, our old electrical switch gear. Just to give you an example of what's happened numerous times. The electrical switch gear can't always handle the load, so when it shuts down, um, we hope it goes back on. Well, it had, it didn't. It, it then it delayed. We got it repaired. Okay. Now they were telling us if it goes again, you're going to need a new electrical switch gear. Well, there's 11 or 12 of those units. So um, we bought one as a safety net. Two weeks later, it went down. We didn't have that sitting there. We would have waited one month for a new one to come in, and we would have been out of school for a month. That's just an example. Then we put that one in. We quickly bought another one. Guess what happened again? It happened again to a different type of system, right? So it's that type of damage control at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars you know, per incident that's occurring 10 times a year, right? So we're putting a Band-Aid on something that needs an operation. So right now, we are in the midst of an MSBA feasibility study, right? So that's a feasibility. We will find out what they tell us we need. Renovation, new building, we're not sure yet until we go through the feasibility study. The feasibility studies are not the same feasibility studies cost-wise that they were five years ago, or even 10 years ago. The estimated cost of the feasibility study is around 1.5 million. So we have a choice. Do we go out to bond the towns for 15 years and put the burden on the towns for 15 years, or do we just roll the money in that we have in our budget that we've been paying for 15 years to steam into our capital stabilization and avoid the bond? Because if we go out to bond, I don't want to do it twice. I want to do it once, be diligent, and be very, very uh, conservative with how we go about this new building. 
and if we do get a new building, it's not going to be filled with all kinds of stuff. We, we have already narrowed this. So they're, they're trying to get us to build this big thing. And we're trying to say, well, how many students do we have? Let's just build it for that. Let's just be conservative and build it the right size because these new buildings are going to be expensive if they go that route. So that's line 10 and 11 um, as far as that's concerned. And that's how we spend our money. The other big cost that you'll see up here um, is the transportation number up here. We have a new five-year transportation um, contract, and that went up 14%, as we would expect. But then when you're going up 14%, and then you take a $70,000 hit in your reimbursement, we're all stuck with the bill. Yes, we are. So that is, you know, that once uh, promise that we once heard that it will be 100% refunded when appropriated correctly well uh, not appropriated I guess but and we know that we're not getting 90% this year like last year correct we aren't getting close to that so there's some of the uh, challenges that aren't new they're the same challenges every school district is going to be coming to you with or hasn't already and uh, so that's uh, that's the nutshell of our budget everything else is in there from um, all the different line items, the hundreds of line items that you see in the budget. But again, this isn't anything we're going to do right now. Um, but that's my budget. Any questions? How many more years on the transportation contract? Uh, this is year one. Year one. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. We just started it. So, year one. Year one out of how many? Year one out of five. Five. Yep. Yeah. How many, how many uh, bus companies been on the contract? Oh, uh, a whole bunch. Uh, oh, really? I think a whole bunch of one. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. All There's right. no competition out yeah. here, which yeah, is right. why they can dictate what that price is going to be. Right. So it's not yeah. the same. Yeah. And yeah, we have we have Ripco for well, Frontier like we and Grammar, but their their rate went up more than fourteen percent. Yeah. And um, yeah. 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 Um, they do junkets down to Mohegan Sun and helps them to pick up. So I guess one of the questions was, was what is your, what is your, just from the cost perspective, what is your cost per student? A cost per student on average or for economy? For no, on average. School it's across the uh, 12,287 dollars on average. In Conway, it's 18,800 change. Do you know if they were there? Or that's what you're assessing the towns. That's yeah. not what we're doing. That's what they tell us it is. That's what their formula tells us it is. But your your overall budget divided by the number of students, isn't that? It's twelve thousand. Yeah. That number you just gave me. Yeah. That number. That's right. what, that's where you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a number. Yeah. It's good for subsidizing certain towns like Orange and. They need help. Um, and then, um, gosh, what was the other one? Um, Oh, the, so one of the things that, that we became aware of this year is that the way you present the information is different than the way the other schools present. So um, when, uh, just in, in, in summary form, so when, when we were putting our budget, your budget before, or it's our budget, our portion of your budget, mm -hmm. um, before town meeting last year, oh. um, we, be, because of the, the different layouts of the different budget, school budgets that we do, we did not include the capital force that six thousand dollar capital in oh, okay. our in our request yeah. at town meeting. Okay. So, um, and when, when and that one of the very first slides that you showed was sort of the Conway and yes. the list of costs. Correct. So, um, my my request to you would be that if, if there's a way to redo that, for just add a category for the capital. Um, uh, part of the assessment to that one page so that the number that the working number that we're giving is the actual number that we need to ask town meeting for. okay so what we can do is we did the sheet that goes out from the superintendent's office of Franklin County Tech that identifies um, what that what the total cost would be right then what we can do is on that one sheet just add what your debt exclusion is as well so you'll have it on that first sheet so you'll have it on that one sheet. I mean, it's broken up. A lot of towns, I go to all the towns, so a lot of towns have the 
the omnibus budget and that does the schools and then they have their capital within their budget and then we would be in that category as well um, and some people list it right under our school franklin county tech assessment that number whatever that is and then right beneath it capital assessment bang then total for franklin county technical school the majority of the towns like deerfield and towns that's the way that they do it they'll put franklin county technical school assessment franklin county technical school capital assessment and then they'll have the total right in the omnibus budget well that's that's what i have here but i think um the confusion, and this was on my part, but I did get it squared away from the FY25, yeah. was the 132000 as the assessment for this year looked to me like that was the total and included the capital. So this was the confusion I had last year. So you can see here, I just found out that I'm, the capital assessment is the amount that didn't get added in properly. Okay. Because I thought that was included in the 170, well, in the 171, 272. The thing that I'm confused about what you have here is transportation's broken out. Yeah. Okay, so then you do it that way. All right. So if you add, if I is if it is 132, and that's just the top of my head. Um, if you had the 125 and the 6,200, you would be in that range for the 132. Is that the 132? Correct. That would be 132, okay. and then if you add the capital assessment Correct. to it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it was confusing last year. So just having another column that says, this is the total. This is what you put on your word. <laughs> yep. I'll have, I'll, I'll, I'll have her send that out to you. We talked about it today before the yep. meeting. Yeah. And she's just going to add that for your town because the other towns already have that you know they do it a little bit differently okay. right so we'll just make sure that it goes out for Conway so you all have it in one thing and I want to be clear you gave us that information last year there was nothing there's no but um, it was just the way that just like Bernie said it was just the way that it was organized it was yep. different there, there just wasn't a column total that just yeah. said fine this is the total sure Okay. You know, like like the letter that comes from um, the treasurer that right. says, "Here's your capital assessment. Here's your assessment." Underneath that, just but here's add it up because we're <laughs> my no my executive is uh, my executive assistant says she's got this. Yes, so she, she does. Well, she's got me squared care. away, so we're all right. We're good. I know we're you two talk. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how many students are in the vet tech program right now? Uh, we can only take up to 15 in that particular program per grade level. All right. So that's filled up. Wow. So 57 or so. How many of your programs are at capacity right now? Um, probably 70%. 70%. What are the ones that are the most efficient? The last one I checked was electrical. Electrical still. We had to add another teacher um, for the electrical program. So uh, probably most of them are at capacity. Yeah. With the electrical being one of those programs like welding and a few others with a long waiting list, uh, students uh, um, wanted to get into that program. So yeah. that what was the first the choice. What about the aviation program? We're going to see how that goes. Uh, next okay. fall is our first freshman class. So. Westfield, does Westfield Tech have a Westfield Tech's the only one in the country that's certified by the FAA, so we mm -hmm. plan on being number two. Is that commercial aviation or also defense? Um, it's going to, no, just not commercial aviation. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, private and commercial, but they're going to have to learn about the small little propeller planes and all that stuff first and build themselves up to the, uh, to the jet simulators that we have. Thank you. Any further questions? Roy, have any um, questions? No. Um, thank you. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Very nice thank you. Very thank you. Thank you very I just much. have to say, I always appreciate how informative your budget is. I've learned so much from it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
so we're, we're still in the finance meeting. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other finance issues? Anything else to present? I wanted to go, if, if there's nothing, I wanted to just get a, do, take a quick look at the omnibus and um, look at the recap tab. Um, that's not completely up to date. Okay. I can't, oh, okay, because right. I had questions about it. Yeah, no. I was trying right. to make sense of it, um, yeah. and I couldn't make sense no, of it. No, you can't right. make sense of it yet. It's the four the four new tabs that I did were the straight with the colon. budget, 2%. Or the Article 2s, oh, the Article 2s, uh, yeah. All the Article 2s, that's what I okay. just finished working on. Okay. I'll, I'll get to the recap this week. Okay, I'm just, right. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm finding it hard to, without understanding, you know, all the, the sources of funds and the... So this will be the sure. final version two, is that? Well, the Thursday we is the the school committee will be passing uh, the common the grammar budget? school budget. Okay. That's really the last major shoe yeah. to drop of our budget. So Monday we'll really have the article two por portion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then we can talk about start to talk about the budget. But then capital. So so you anticipate having updated recap tab. Yes, for next week. For okay. next one. Okay, yes. that's fine. Yeah. Yep. And what about the uh, capital budget? I haven't gotten started on that yet. I don't know. Yeah. All right. I mean, that'll be that'll be on that. The I'll deadline pa passes this week, right? Or it already passed. Capital. For capital, submitting submitting oh, submitting final. capital was done a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But do we still have outstanding? Right. We still have some things that not everyone has submitted, correct? No, everybody submitted. It has. Um, well. Yes, I think I think we're good with that. So yeah, I do have like the running tab of the free cash, okay. which we have this year, and the different articles that will come out of that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I should make a motion then to conclude the uh, finance. I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting jointly with the honorable select board. <laughs> uh, second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 All right. I just won't count that. That's great. That was wishful thinking. Next it's next Monday is April Fool's. We can do it. It's perfect for a budget meeting. Six thirty-five. Okay. I can also, I guess, have this time sequence. Now the personnel committee has the floor. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you all. Which we also <laughs> call to order a cross makers. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in order. I will. Order. We can, we're taking a candy break here. So there's a question, tech, uh, procedural question. Mm -hmm. We called a personnel committee, committee meeting to order, but we didn't post the meeting 48 hours in advance. No, oh, that's okay. So. You're on the select board agenda as yeah. ma making a presentation. Okay, so you'll consider that as a, uh, okay, yeah. great. So you won't get you won't get chief face to arrest us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might do that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, just just for you, I mean, you uh, the 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 um, finance committee always does this too. You don't actually have to motion a the, meeting. The start, yeah. You just the, call the, the it chair to order. can just yeah. declare, just call it to order, yeah. and it's 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 open. So. Thank you. To be a real dictator. Saves ten seconds. <laughs> and <laughs> they got them. Seconds or seconds, yeah. Okay, so we're going to discuss the uh, the report, the personnel committee report. Is that what's next on the uh, agenda? Um, yeah. Okay. So I was going to suggest that you share your screen because I'm assuming that no one on select board has seen this yet. Oh, the report? No, we have. Oh, you have you it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, I I have to take notes. Meeting meeting so. Okay. So the way I thought we could begin is, well, we can do it one of two ways. We can step through the report, or we can just start with questions if you've already reviewed it and you have any questions or comments. What would you prefer? I'm pretty agnostic on this. Okay. I too. Okay. So I think then we can just step through it. Um, the point of this exercise was really just try to put some structure around the information that we've collected and reviewed so far, which is, which is in more detail in the attachments. And all of these sections of this report is a, is a summary of everything that is in the attachment. So you'll see that 
Um, there's three bullet points that are some basic, the basic premise that we used. Um, so again, if we call out that it's not in con to consider the merits of any individual who's a, currently a town employee. Also, I'll add that this is in draft status, so it can be further revised, or we can add additional information if necessary after this meeting. And the background of this was looking at current staffing versus targets. Um, and using the highway exam, the highway department as an example of that. So there you see in the first table, there's the job roles, there's the current staffing, and then there's the target staffing. And the bullet points make some assumptions about, for example, under normal circumstances, chronic understaffing of employees with CDL places an unfair burden on the remaining highway department employees. That's what we have learned anecdotally in the committee. Um, Furthermore, there's a note that the superintendent has logged 393 hours and that the superintendent has requested um, an hourly wage increase for operator CDL and labor, labor jobs as well as higher compensation for himself. Um, and one of the interesting things that we looked at was the comparison of Conway with other towns. And that is um, attachment A. Attachment A. Find that myself. And that was sort of the premise of all of the analysis that we did to just baseline Conway against all the other towns nearby. So I'm going to pull up attachment A. So that would be like Paul Rain? Butler? Mm -hmm. um, no, the, not Irving, not It's, it's Shelburne, Waitley, um, uh, Ashfield, and a few other towns with, with very similar um, levy limits to, to Conway. Okay, no. How about Miles of Road? Um, it's listed in the, in the attachment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the miles of road, it, it is quite variable, as you yes, as you I know. Do. So Sunderland doesn't have much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we go to attachment A, for example, you'll see um, superintendent, foreman, operator, laborer, and as you can see, Conway is at the low, the lower end of this range. So that was the baseline for our discussion. I don't so, think that got yeah, printed out. Uh, yeah, we got emailed out. out. Oh, it didn't? Yeah, so oh, got emailed out? Yeah. Okay. Um, it did? Um, yeah, it did. I thought. Yeah. Phyllis, you emailed it out on um, Friday. Thursday Friday. John mailed it. You mailed it out. Did I? Did I? Oh, you I no, think I you did. sent it out. I yeah. sent it out, yes. <laughs> The it's not listed as attachment A, probably. Am I not entitled that? Because we hadn't completed the report. All I have is the JD, the job description. Ah, okay. That, correct. So attachment A has probably not been distributed. No, I thought I sent them all out this morning. I saw it. I didn't, I didn't, I did not see it. Are you going to send it now to, to everybody? Well, I'm trying to, I'm, um, I'm not connected, so okay, I'm, I I'll can't get into my, yeah, if you can send it out, but, well, if you send it to me, I can put it up on the screen. Right, what I sent out on, on Friday was a revision. It's in the, uh, it's, it's in the shared folder. Yeah, so I know, but I can't get to yeah, the. Yeah, there's a link right there, it says attachment A is now in this folder, if you look at the email. In the oh, body oh, of the email oh, 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 why am I not seeing that attachment A is? To the right. Right yeah, here. Right. Oh, in this yeah, one. Just, this one. <laughs> That's yeah. hysterical. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Crime detection. All yeah, right. Um, okay, but there's two, so there, I do. There's somehow this one? there's a second copy got uploaded. They're they're identical. They should be identical. Okay. All right. All right. Um, let me see how I can make it bigger. Come yeah. on. Come on. Where is it? 
There you go. Oops. So this is the, the Pure Town grouping. It includes superintendent compensation, foreman compensation, uh, operator CDL compensation, and laborer compensation. Uh, it includes insurance percentage paid by the town to the, as part of the compensation uh, where it's been available. Uh, there's your road miles, Tom, and then um, the levy limits. So this, is, this was a larger spreadsheet of like 30 some towns. Um, and then when all was said and done, we, we whittled it down based on the, the towns that were closest to our, our own levy limit. It seemed to make a lot of sense. Oh, you know what? Voice selling actually. Nashville has 116 and 12. Hey. Mm -hmm. But the levy was over $2 million. Yeah. So then I mean, you can see that uh, Conway, the, focusing on the operator CDL, because that's re really what we wanted to think about first, because we feel like the understaffing is, is sort of a, a foundational problem for the town that's leading to a lot of other issues and um, you know with, with 2380 being our top rate paid and that's with a CDL operator with four 4g hoisters license um, Ron actually pays a little bit less for uh, Ron the superintendent pays a little bit less for um, folks that have lower lower levels of licensing so they might might take a dollar, dollar fifty off, depending. So that would be the max level that anybody in the department is being paid as of FY24, 2380. Um, and you can see that the average is actually high 26 when you take all these towns. It's like 2680 something, I think. It's in the report. Um, and and this is again FY24, not FY25, right? So I mean, the assumption is going to be that these rates are going to go up for FY25 by by some cola amount at these towns. So um, the department has requested a a rate of $27 an hour. I mean, as a committee, I think what our our recommendation is is that we're saying we should. You know, at least set that as a minimum level for for the the highest hourly rate for the department for the operator CDL. Um, it gets us at least eliminates this non-competitive salary aspect from recruiting. Um, it may not eliminate all the reasons why we are, you know, not getting staff in or having trouble maintaining staff. On the team, but at least you know by doing this, we're on a level playing field with the other towns, and we can eliminate at least one one detrimental aspect to our hiring efforts. And I think um, as and and this is also kind of combines with the primary goal, which is to staff up the department to its expected levels with the right people, the right right licensing and everything else because in the absence of that it's almost impossible to manage performance if you're not staff right. if you're budgeted for x number of employees you have open positions it's very difficult to manage performance if you're not even minimally minimally staffed to those staff i mean levels. think about the the hit the capacity in that department oh, yeah. Yeah. it's horrible right you know? mm -hmm. yeah so um that's a that's Right now, that's our formal recommendation for the operator CDL wage. Um, as far as the superintendent wage, uh, there's a, been a request put forward for FY25 to increase that to 79,000 plus implement, uh, you know, overtime component. Uh, we're still discussing issues around that. Um, that's complicated. Um, for a number of reasons, it's only because it's not common to have overtime for salaried positions right. anywhere. And it, and it does create a perverse incentive. It does. Which, which you, you know, we're, we're kind of not really keen on. Um, but even beyond that, uh, we think that there is also, the town is lacking a lot of um, performance evaluation and, you know, even basic disciplinary kind of policies and procedures and procedures and we really need to sort of get our hands around that before we could really feel comfortable making a recommendation around the 
Yes. Change compensation change. For is it because in the absence of documentation in terms of individual employee performance, regardless if it's the highway department or any other role, you can't manage performance if you don't have deficits and performance ex I mean, extremely good performance documented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, that does sort of fold into the employee manual, for example, because the, you know you have you can cite all those things in the employee manual, and you generally have separately procedures that support those those policies. But in, in the absence of that, it's very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult to manage performance if you don't have anything documented. Um, and then, so we've pretty much discussed the recommendation at the re that's been made by the highway superintendent. We, there's one, we haven't talked about labor, the labor oh, rate, yes, which is- Oh, yes, that's uh, what I was gonna get to. Um, this is a little misleading because that's not really Conway's labor rate up there at 2144. That's the actual current pay of, a, of somebody who's on, on the team, who, who's a little bit more than a laborer. Um, so, but our, the request was to make the laborer rate twenty-one dollars an hour, and we didn't we didn't really see any any problem with adhering to that requ that request. I don't think it's foundational, and this tar the target staffing is only one full-time laborer anyway. Uh, so so truthfully, it's it's uh, we haven't had a formal vote on, vote on this yet, but we we made the recommendation in the draft report because uh, we kind of. Just assumed it was a reasonable, yeah. a reasonable request. So. And then our next meeting is Wednesday, so presumably we will be voting. We'll have a motion on. We'll have, on, we'll on have motions and votes on these. So, Veronique, is this target staffing reflected in this year's budget request? Like in the salary line, does it yes. show that we yes are should have four we should have operators and one mm -hmm. full-time laborer? Okay. Right, so it's, it's a department, supposed to be a department of seven. So the highway superintendent, four CDL operators, one laborer, and one part-time assistant. And we did just get um, our letter of resignation from our laborer for the end of June. So we are now down to the highway superintendent, one CDL holder, um, the temporary CDL is leaving right now, then, you know, basically two labor, well, two yeah, laborers, first. but one will be gone in July, so, and no, so we're really, we're incredibly short-staffed mm -hmm. with highway, incredibly short-staffed. Mm -hmm. So, do, do we know how much of the highway department budget is gonna revert to free cash after, well, probably not much, but I mean, like, because of, because I, I assume that we have, like, oh, because the salary lines that we didn't spend. I do not know yet. Okay. I do not know yet. I do know um, sometimes if, there's excess and, and um, there's need for more material. Right. That there might be a request at the you know starting in May to see if we could switch between okay. the lines to buy yeah, more material. Last year was forty thousand. Year before was fifty thousand. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That we return to free cash from. No, that, that was. That we are portioned to uh, more materials okay. from because right. of quote unquote savings. And because we've been so low staffed right. okay. that we had so. excess in the salary line and yeah. So we're basically, it's, I mean, so what, what we haven't spent, I mean, we have spent it. We're, I mean, we're not, I guess my point is we're not sending highway department money to free cash year after year, right? I mean, oh, we're, no. Right, no. Okay. <laughs> That's probably the last one that sends money yeah. to free cash. So there was, the, the other recommendation that we included here was um, pursuant to the uh, disaster relief funds and the time spent by the superintendent uh, who logging, you know, doing the, the, the storm, storm water and, and all that, the relief, uh, paving the roads and, and all the work that went into uh, trying to get the town back on its feet after, after the two July floods in particular. Um, and so we felt that was, that's, that's a separate discussion from the new salary, new compensation plan discussion. Um, and some of the logic around this was, well, you know, that, those extra hours were included in the the estimates of damage estimates that the town put forth to the state. And when we were talking to uh, MEMA and other organizations, we had instructed the superintendent to track his hours for that purpose. Um, and now that those hours have been tracked and there are 393, I won't call them overtime because there is no overtime for an exempt position but um, we'll call them excess hours. 
and so um, we felt that there that should be you know there should be some compensation there especially since the state recognized you because it was part of the submittal and the funds are there and it's not, not coming out of the, the general operating budget it's the, the disaster relief right. funds are there and we have wide discretion to spend that money our, our understanding from the DOR and our accountant absolutely well, yes. ex except that, that this was done in the right. service yeah, so even, of right. you know yes right yes but even if there was an issue around like I don't, I don't know yeah. it's, it's I don't like, think anybody could could argue against you know the fact that those hours weren't spent you know remaking the roads yeah no I mean I, and that's yeah, I think no, we've we basically been told by the DOR that like yes we're yeah. we have very we can mm -hmm. we could this is not like DOR is not going to take issue with us using Flood relief money and our and our standard when we were discussing this in the committee was pretty simple did the work get done yeah, yeah. did the work get done yes the work got and done should be were the hours between. documented yeah. yes they were documented yeah. now issues were this is an ancillary comment on my part is issues regarding performance right discipline that is for the purpose of the analysis we did for this recommendation that is a separate matter right for us it was purely did the work get done yeah. so I, one of the reasons why um, I put this on the agenda is because this did come up last week for the select board as part of the town administrator's report, mm -hmm. which is generally something that is the, the purpose of the creation of the town administrator's report as a concept was for the town administrator to tell the select board of the town what the town administrator has been doing for the week. It, um, so, so because the topic was not on the agenda and did not give fair notice to members of the public that it would be discussed, it's one of the reasons why I put it on for this time, so mm -hmm. that um, I, I'm not going to call it problematic or whatever, but just so that whatever, if there was any kind of problem, then we're curing it by having it on the agenda and talking about it this time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And um, at when, when this came up last week, um, I've kind of thrown for a surprise, and I, um, but I, uh, I, I do agree that the, the hours were worth, uh, or a lot of those. Uh, the the um, we've never he, the, the 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 position does not it is not one that fills out timesheets. So um, these were, and were not was not like submitted weekly for whatever for bear, whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. They work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Every week. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yes. But but the, but that's like a reimbursement. You have to do that. But the, but the position is not. Um, you know the position does not call for. Um, it, 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 it's an exempt position by law that. Right. Over, so over, over time would not attach to it. So, um, I don't know what the math at the straight rate would be. Um, as opposed, because the, the, the $20,000 number that we were given um, was based on overtime. Well, it was based on a multiplier that was equivalent to overtime. Correct. I would, you know, because again, Correct. there is no overtime. But, right? but, right. So, but so if, if a position is not entitled to overtime, then to then give overtime and just call it something else. Well, it, you can call it a bonus, and you can, you know, but how do you calculate They don't want the to bonus? call it a bonus. It's like a stipend. Yeah, they, what they, if you call it a stipend, it is it's pensionable, and if you call it a bonus, it's non-pensionable. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so there, it costs the town less to call it a bonus than to call it a stipend. Apparently, I asked about that, and apparently that's not, I was told that that's not, because that I've, made perfect I've sense the, to me. I've got the PIRAC documentation, and... Oh. Everything in the, in the Franklin County uh, Be, because what I what I was told is that what I, what I was told is that stipend is for work that hasn't been performed. Bonus is for work that has been performed. Um, and that, well, well, yeah, which would apply in this case. But it's a one. It's a one time. It's not a recurring payment that will be right. made, made to the individual. This is right. a, a one time recognition. Of an know, extraordinary circumstance for work that has been performed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, so I would. And, and the only difference is if we call it a bonus, or d depending upon what we name it. If it's a, it, yeah, if it's, if it's a regular expected compensation, mm -hmm. like a stipend, you guys right. get a stipend, right? Yeah, every year you can expect a certain mm -hmm. amount of money. That could conceivably be argued as regular compensation. And therefore, because it's, it's regular paid so regularly. Do we, is that, is, is that a, a consideration here? That if we award this 
that would, that's up for you guys well, to okay. decide. You it's have to decide if you want to well, increase the tax Well, town treasurer has suggested stipend. Yeah, town treasurer has, has suggested stipend, okay. but I mean, from a but that assumes um, that's going to cost the town more money because we'll have to pension that. So um, Do we know how much more. I don't, I don't. It depends how long <laughs> the, the <laughs> answer to that question what depends on how long mean? the person lives after retirement. Yeah. But off the value of $20,000, that's probably not. I think we're mixing say. something of what the, the tech count, town accountant was um, referring to with the stipend was the, the court that hasn't happened yet, right? I don't think it was re in reference oh, to the extra oh, work. Oh, our uh, treasurer? Treasurer, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that was all in reference to, yeah, the the pickleball courts right. and the public safety oh, okay. building. And that's a separate discussion. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. future work. Future and that, that's a whole but, other but discussion, this, too. Not in this, this is This is, this is, money this is completed work, and, and okay. you know. So I, my question is, is there a question from the board to would you like to try to understand, for example, what would be the pension liability if it was paid as one form over another or not? I'm just trying to understand. I mean, if we yes, have an action. sort of. I do, but but also I feel like it's probably going to be negligible because the amount we're talking about is twenty thousand yes. dollars. Okay. So yeah. I don't really. Yeah. I mean, I just. Okay. I, I don't know that. You know. Yeah. Again, it's, it's not worth. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of this. This is not worth. It's not. I like. I don't want you guys to right. So we left it to you guys. We we said that you know this is our amount that we are we're going to recommend to you, and then the, the balls in your court to decide. How you want to proceed okay and this is only a draft report so of course it would be changed to final status after this meeting and then the select board would be able to make their decision okay so you're not asking us to vote on this no. tonight no okay. no we're no. just doing a presentation no. we can come back next and week I, if you and I, like us i am in uh, i am in um agreement that i am all for a bonus but i want anything that states or even shows over time to right. be removed. We, yeah, we don't need to use the word over time because we don't want to set precedence around. Correct. Yeah. No yeah. precedence around that whatsoever. Yeah. Exempt, it is exempt. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So these almost 400 hours is Ronnie's hours. Is that right? The superintendent's hours. Yes. yes. That is right. The crew has been well, paid overtime. Well, we know overtime. who it is. <laughs> the crew yes. has been paid overtime. Right. Yeah. Yeah. During those. Now we're working so that's team. equivalent of 10 weeks. Yeah, defining so and delimiting the week, the exemptions the for an executive. Weeks. It is stated right here. That it's cannot totally happen. Year. Or, so, what are you referring to? Um, federal law. No. Well, some towns have contracts with the highway superintendents that does have exemptions. We looked into that. There are some towns that have. You're talking about overtime right. specifically. Correct. Yeah, yeah. We're not, it's not. It's not overtime. Right. But that's, we had a, just to do a sidebar comment here, is we had it, we did have a discussion regarding, because I brought it up, it's like, well, what other towns have highway superintendents under contract? Right. And some of them do, not a lot, handful of, of the group that we've decided to focus on. So could the town consider doing that? Sure, you could. That's a decision for a later but that's time. But that's in the future. That's future. What we're talking about here is the work that's been that's completed. Argument. Yes. You know. So when you say so, this is like a contract for for work above and beyond. That's in no, it's a contract area. for the position. Like you know, Veronique has a contract with the town, right? The police chief has a. You have two okay, so our, our, so our highway superintendent does not have a contract. No, he does not. Okay. No, he does not. So, no. so the difference is, of course, if you have a contract, whether it's between a town employee in the town or between other entities, it's 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 enforceable for both parties. Right. And you can put in a contract all kinds of terms and conditions that would not normally apply to what you would consider to be an exempt right. employee. Most CEOs are on employment contracts. Right. You know, anybody who's you know above a senior manager in an organization. But most highway supervisors are not. There are a handful. I could and, we yeah. could report to you next week if you yeah. wanted to know which towns do really, have them. Um because we know that. Um I but I, I did say last week just sort of as a first impression that I didn't even want to put this concept up for a vote. I, I definitely would like to retract that, and I think that it is worth voting on in some manner. Um, uh, it's definitely one of those instances where everybody telling me I'm wrong probably actually means I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, well, but I wanted to mention something too, because we're looking at um, the comparisons between other towns, so it should also be noted that our highway department, um, it's hard to compare to other towns over the last year because other towns didn't have the devastating floods right. that we had. True. Um, yeah. Even if they do are understaffed like we are, um, and that brought about 
quite a bit of a challenge to not just us, but obviously the highway department in, in full. Mm -hmm. That's why I'd also like to, you know, yeah, say I, I definitely am I'm for this. And when you think about 400 hours, I mean, that's 20% of a full year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're not even to a full year. We're, that was only through the end of January. Right. You'd have to get to mid-July to get to the full year. Yeah. So, I mean, but, that's a lot you know, of hours. The, there, the thing about the, the, normally when you would consider this, you would consider like a bonus for, for mm -hmm. excess hours worked. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't consider it in the context of a one month period or a two month no, period. That's you would, you would you consider it in an annual yes, period. Right. That's and that's and because you have performance metrics. So this is right. different than that. So right. that's, that's but, again the whole other discussion of how does the town manage performance. Mm -hmm. and, and so because we don't have that information about excess hours over the past year, the year before that, the year from yes. the 2017 we, yeah, right. tornado, right. etc. Right. Et um, we do know that this year only had three relatively modest snow events. So the normal excess hours mm -hmm. at the snow behind the snow plow <coughs> would not have taken place. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Actually, um, just just so you know, there were a lot of events this year that may not have been snow, but there's a lot of ice, mm -hmm. and the different parts of town get different weather. So even though we we may be fine here. Up towards Asheville, they may need work. I'm just saying, it's it's not quite as simple. But uh, but I you know I did, before I side, got sidetracked there, I just did, did want to say that mm -hmm. um, no, not by you, by my own tangent. Um, <laughs> no. um, but the the um, you know the, he, the, no doubt he worked a ton of hours, mm -hmm. no doubt, and the town was a smoking or a dripping pile of rubble, mm -hmm. um, and he got it in ship shape, the roads. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that that is there is something to be said for that mm -hmm. and yes. in the United States of America yes. generally the way you express those things is with cold hard cash mm -hmm. um, so you know that there is but the, when we look at that when we look at what's appropriate and and, uh, and all that um, for, for any compensation it's important to me that we look at all Compensation that's being requested mm -hmm. yes. um, for by that position for yes. the year, right. yes. and um, and then look at it, you know, rather than just piecemeal, right. because there are there is other compensation mm -hmm. that's being requested. Well, so, when we have um, our discussions in the committee, you know, the three of us are very aware of what is going to set adverse precedent or unwelcome precedent, and what won't, especially when it comes to subjects like individual compensation. So that's why we did a lot of discussion about, well, what, were, what are we really talking about here, which is everything that we just talked about, which is the roads. Did they get fixed? They got fixed. It was, it's, a, it's a limited mm -hmm. uh, definition. Right. So I'm pretty confident that we're not setting an adverse precedent because every one of these incidents will be judged on its own merits mm -hmm. when they happen. I agree. And it's not a precedent that's going to set anything for future Somebody could make any employee could make a claim that somebody got something that and, they didn't. And the other thing, yeah, the thing that I keep going back to is what is the top priority for the department, mm -hmm. and that is getting the staffing in order, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Building the capacity back up so that we don't find the superintendent does not find themselves in right. this position in the future because right. you know the town's not setting the precedent. We're not. It's an exempt position. You can't expect that there's going to be bonus payments or overtime payments or anything like that. So, so you know, it's in the best interest of the superintendent to fully staff that department. Yeah. That's yeah. So you pick the, a great point. So the one thing you did not talk about, though, is the job description. Right, okay, so we can go back through that. Um, there are just minor changes to the job description. Um, and the reason, let me just preface before Wait, we... Did Roy, did, was Roy saying something? No, no indigestion. <laughs> so, um, the all. reason the reason why I, I sent the revision that Phil asked me to make was for transparency and awareness because ultimately the select board, all of the select board, is responsible for the, for management of town employees. So that's really why I sent it out, just so that you know what it was. And everything other than the change that I made that Phil requested, every all the other changes are a result of discussion that have, that's happened between. Myself, John, Alan, and Veronique, as we were going over that job description. 
And you got all the all the notes and sidebars on this document, so you're aware of what the proposed changes are. Well, the only I mean the only change that I could see was the one was was the the addition under supervision required. That was the only comment. Well, the, the dilemma that I had was, and I said this in my email, is that I'm working on a Mac and I don't have Microsoft Office. So I would love to be able to send you a redlined work doc, Word document. I'm on a Mac. Can you send, can you send it directly to me? Well, <laughs> like she doesn't have Word. I, oh, I don't, oh, you have, don't have Word. Office. Oh, yeah, I don't have yeah. Word. Okay. So, so and she's used to working in Word. For, if for I had been working in Word, which I know like yeah. with my eyes closed. So what are you using, Word? Uh, Google. Using oh, Google. Oh, Google. Yeah, okay. I don't yeah, have okay. Word that's, on my, yeah. on my okay. personal laptop. So that's why you can't really see the red line and you can't mouse over okay. the changes to see who made I can see them, the comments. Okay. Yeah. I thought the, I thought the change that you made was the first paragraph of essential That functions. is the change that I made to reflect. Yeah. That's, that's one use. change. So where? Right, and then under supervisory responsibility, we, we, we removed the specific number of, of employees. I had A because it didn't align with the, the, the target max. And, and the target will change over time, so it was yeah. not relevant. Um, what I would have, my Mac is about to, the battery is about to die, but what I am, would be happy to do, if you want us to come to the next select board meeting, is I'll have my laptop charged and we can open it up in Google Docs and you can see all of the comments. That might be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you're I, thought, a very I thought this was wonderful as is and I was... It's I pretty mean, good. I, yeah. I put this on the agenda hoping that we would vote it into existence. Well, there was one sentence I remember reading, I can't find it now, that was a very broad-based statement basically saying... I think I know what you're talking about. ...that whatever work is given should, needs to be performed. And I'm oh. trying to find where that is. Um, but I remember reading that and saying that's very broad. If I had that in my contract, I'd say no way. <laughs> um, it's not a contract, it's job description. Yeah. Oh, a JD. But, but still, still it's a I job mean, it's job yeah, description. which aren't really binding, but. I didn't see anything that I would interpret it that, like that. Yeah, I don't recall anything like that either. I, uh, let me try to find Can I just so. ask a question? Of, um, just because looking at it from from the administrating of this point of view, wouldn't we want to go through every single job description? And well, that was the recommendation. Rather than not then just pick out one right. oh, yeah. no, at a time. When Phil called me, he made it very clear that town council instructed him to make that revision that appears in the first paragraph of the highway superintendent description. Mm -hmm. Carry that across all the town job descriptions. <coughs> right. I'm just saying that it, it kind of feels like we're just doing one. Oh, yeah, are one we going to review position? all the job descriptions? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's. That, that's our intent. You see what I mean? I, yeah. I'm not sure why we needed to just pick just up one right. job description. Because that's, that's the one that's done. Well, well it's, the one we, it's we, the one that we well, reviewed. But then maybe we should do them all in bulk instead of exactly. All, yeah. all, all which which, which all is all fine. Ones. I mean, we were we, we looked at this because it was the, the first step in trying to have a discussion around compensation. Yeah, it was the most like what, yeah. what does the job oh, yeah, description really. say? Yeah. So can we have a fair conversation yes. about compensation without understanding the job description? Um, now that we've sort of sort of tabled that that conversation for yeah. for the moment, we did get this done, and and it's there, and we you know so it's got our revisions recommended revisions in it. Um, I think I would prefer to do them all at once, if it's not yeah. pressing. That's your that's to, your that's I mean, your choice. That's personally, I would. But, but there are yeah. reasons to do them as soon as we can, all of them as soon as they're off the press. <laughs> Um, there are, are are many of them. So well, now that now that we've have finished this one, which was the most urgent need, the rest will be so easy. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really. No, no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I assume I, the the need for doing this one was based on the salary request. Correct. Yeah, which is and why. The, and so the, that makes yes, sense. Yes, and yeah. and the request for to be compensated for expert extraordinary yeah. circumstances. Yeah. So, so I mean, I I would just propose that we just get this one out of the way and just just. just Pass it. It's good. If you're prepared to vote on it now, that's yeah. I'm fine with that. I okay. I mean I guess I would I would personally I would prefer to see the I mean because we didn't see like your document with like the red lines and the revision. The only thing that I can see that was like changed, according to the document I have, is the addition of mm -hmm. under the administrative direction of the town administrator right. upon the direction of the select board. There were there were prior to that okay. prior to me making that change in Phil's direction. There were some revisions that were made in committee, in the personnel committee, mm -hmm. that you cannot easily see okay. on what you have, and that's because of the constraint right. that I have of going from Word to a Mac at, through Google Docs. 
Did you want then to put on the agenda for next week a vote on the bonus or stipend and a vote on the job description? The, the, vo the, the bonus and stipend, um, when we do the votes for all of the salary stuff, which I don't know when we do I, when we do the vote for. I think, I mean, but that's 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 different. That's like yeah. cola and, and and salary requests. I mean, this is like a one time mm -hmm. yes yeah compensation. I don't think those should be tied together. Personally. There it is. Okay. What did you find? Implements and administers policies and directives of the town admin and select board. That's very broad. Policies, yes. Directives is, I don't know about that word, directives. Well, see that, to my, my interpretation of that is somewhat, uh, sort of folds into performance. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't, you can't fulfill a directive from anybody that, that manages you unless you know what the performance expectations are. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, that's a very broad statement. And in and of itself, if it, if it just stayed there without supporting documentation in an employee manual and procedures mm -hmm. that, that have to be followed, then somebody could absolutely dispute that. It's like, you never told me what the directive was. You didn't put right. it in writing, whatever. Yeah, whatever. usually there's like a stipulation about reasonable expectation. Right. Well, the other thing too is reasonable is a pretty low standard. Yes. So yeah, you have is. to decide you want a high that, standard yeah, or that's a why, low standard. That's why I like the policies, <laughs> the directive on there is just a little, yeah. But the other thing that we were discussing in the committee is, you know, and Alan brought this up a couple of times, is this is not a large, Conway's not a large corporation which has this whole group of people who manage these things professionally. So we have to strike a balance between what's reasonable for the town, something that's clear and unambiguous for employees with respect to their roles, and something that makes sense. So, you know, that type of that type of editorial change is the kind of thing that does need to be considered. And like I said, you, I suppose you could have it in there in and of itself, but you would need to have something around it to support it. I, and the employee would have to be aware of it, right? I, I think that's why I was saying to do them all at once, because if, if so that know. statement's going in all Everywhere, of them, then yeah. you want to have the documentation or whatever the process is behind all of them. Just like when we had the personnel handbook, and when I spoke at town council, it was like, well, you've got to take this out and this out and this out, because you don't have the forms of the process, yeah, yeah. but you got it in the book. Yes. So I guess that's what I'm saying. It kind of feels like putting the cart before the horse. There's nothing cart before the horse, and that really was a little bit, oh, all right. Um, I, 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 you, can make, the, you can make a recommendation. Because we'll the, 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 anyway. the, the personnel committee was fine voting on this now. We already spent a half an hour on it. This yeah. is just enough. The job description is OK. And let's just get be done with it. That's just all. Okay. Let's just pass it. Let's just, why do we want to have to do this again? OK, so, we, so you want to vote on the revised job description? Yeah, they did a good job. Highway superintendent. And then the, uh, the well, do you want to vote on the approving the analysis that we did for the extraordinary compensation, or do you want to vote on that next week after I, you get a non-draft status report? Uh, well, you, you, like you, you want there, there was an aspect of that thing that you were still that you still wanted to discuss more the 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 top line supervisor salary, whatever. Well, so. that, that yeah, that may not. I'm not sure that we're going to get to a resolution on that because the, there's all that you know, performance analysis and stuff that has to go into into that. Um, but if we're just, if we're, if we're, I can make a motion to vote on one-time compensation yeah. for the highway superintendent if, for? If, if, yeah, if you guys are ready to do that, that's fine. Yeah, we, actually, yeah. we actually don't have that on the agenda for a vote, but I'm okay putting that on for next week. Okay. We just have that for discussion. discussion. Oh, so because we that's didn't say vote? Discussion vote. Okay, all right. Yeah. But I'm okay doing that for next week. Well, then okay. you get a draft, you get a final report before then, anyway. So okay. be, everything will be documented. You want to make a motion to add it to next week? <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> Put that on the agenda. Then that's not needed, right? No, I don't. Yeah. So, um, so do, do the, um, so I'll make a motion to approve the job description. Um, um, for the highway superintendent. For the highway superintendent, the revised hot off the presses job description. Uh, second. 
and this will be implemented when today, as of today? Um, I, don't the have next the, I don't have the complete job description, so I'm going to need yeah. to see the, like, is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. It is the yeah. unredlined, right? Yeah, 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 the version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And generally, when they're revised, like within a function, they're yeah. all done at once and then released to the employees because as of that new release date, it applies to that individual. Because yeah. you'll notice that this is dated 2016, mm -hmm. but it's subsequently being revised. We have, that date has to get up, uh, updated. And will you, uh, Barney, review this with the outside council? What's your, what's your thoughts on the process? If you make a recommendation, by it is the, is the process. I, I can. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess that's why, again, why I was saying I would just. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm ready to move forward with it, and, yeah. but it, it does need to go through council, right? I would assume. I guess we are just looking yeah. at something that clearly says draft too. We haven't yeah. seen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was assuming that the sidebar bits, once it gets printed, would not be in there. But yeah. we could specify Correct. we could specify <laughs> that the sidebar bit, that the that the job description as presented to us, minus the editorial comments on the yeah. side and the water cut water the, the, yeah the water the watermark water saying draft yes. yeah. um, that be be adopted. I mean, it's just, yeah. um, which is, would you by council? Council makes any change? Okay, you, come you already back. seconded, I don't, right? Did I? I, yeah, I, did yeah, I, I guess yeah. I did. I'm, so I'm, 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 yes, I'm, yes, I'm pretty sure you did. Okay. You did it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. That was it for us. That's it. I think you guys did a great job. Yeah, actually. Yeah, um, thank you for all your hard work. Actually, it was a really nice first report from our new and uh, it, revised yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. personnel committee. And I thank you. Um, and so for next week, discussion of stipend versus uh, versus overtime. Yeah, well, it's going to be want, just, it's all going to be the grammar school budget first. All right. Um, um, do you do want do you want well, anyone else here outside from us, like the treasurer or any accountant? Um, what were your thoughts? Yeah. So my my way of thinking when we talk about compensation, because ultimately when it comes to town meeting, it's the top line total numbers that are hugely important. Right. Yeah. So that's like one decision that I don't want to make on a piecemeal basis without knowing what yeah. the other parts of the equation are. Yeah, right? I agree with that. That's um, why I was trying to get to that last tab that Veronique has not and, completed yet. That's so the recap, but that's so where the, the other four are there, because it yeah. tells you the whole budget and what the... the you know, other, yeah. Oh yeah, there, it's all there. Well, you don't have to worry but there, about are a lot of, there are a lot of things in there, again, that I was seeking clarification on, so I'm trying to get the whole picture, like Bill is. So I, I, I agree that um, it's important for us. But the, but the other part that you're looking at the recap has to do with money that's coming elsewhere. That's not just coming out of yeah. So the, 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 the top the top section there, the, the general fund, right? Or well, the general, general expenses. Right. Everything that's in Article Two. Yeah. 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 So the other stuff is coming from different sources. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not going to impact. I know. Yeah. Okay. So, but it do, the top line impacts, and if. You know, for instance, if, and this is not actually factually true, but if, say, all the other sources of income would add up to $500,000, even though it wouldn't impact the budget, that would still be like a very problematic thing at mm -hmm. town meeting. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why I say like all, the, um, it, you know, it's, it's good to note the sources of income when you're making these decisions, yeah. but it's not, it, they're not irrelevant to the decision. So, that's that. Um, and, uh, you know, and then the best procedural way to, to like deal with this, just because you have the ability to make decisions to, some decisions are best left for town meeting, particularly controversial ones. Um, well, town meeting is everything, so they think they do. Uh, no, I mean, you know, if, if you feel that if, if, you know, a good a good example that town council say to me is like, if you think a decision is like a 50-50, some hate it, love it decision in, in the town, those are good decisions to ask town meeting yeah. to take on. Um, well, the issue with uh, stipend versus the overtime is that the issue of pension and the uh, long-term effect of liability in the town, which we keep probably de minimis. But that's the main thing, because otherwise the money we're talking about is coming out outside of the living appropriate portion of our, uh, our town budget. 
Sorry, we still got other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do, are we done with personnel? We are done with personnel. Did we make a motion? Oh, yeah, we did. Move to close the meeting. Move to close the meeting for the personnel committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Roy. Um, does anybody have a, any problems with the Frontier ENT assessment request? No. No. The motion to approve the Frontier ENT assessment request. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the the um, uh, policy regarding share of mail, I'm going to. Uh, pretend that I never wanted to put that on the agenda and just delete it and table it for permanent, it, uh, <laughs> permanently. Um, oh, good. Discussion and vote. Letter to Mass District, Mass Dot District 1 requesting fast traffic. This is the one thing that I get comments about or uh, questions about, probably still more than anything else. And um, I know I know there is, the recent news is that Mass Dot is meeting with um, um, the highway departments of Shelburne and um, uh, uh, and Conway, but this is still something that I, I I think we might have talked about this a little bit ago, but I would still like to. We did. Yeah. The, the, the board had asked me to reach out to the two towns since they're going to be meeting. What I wanted to do was wait and see what happens at this meeting, and then talk to them. So and and I think maybe uh, just to forget the other towns, just a letter from our town, just saying that. It's really important to us that this proceed expeditiously. Okay. We just help that meeting along, so or it couldn't hurt. Who is MassDOT meeting with? I mean, they should like. So MassDOT contacted both um, Shelburne and Conway Highway oh, okay. departments All right, so. to discuss. And as far as we're aware, 2025 is when it's slated for. So I'm not sure it can go any faster than that with everything that's got to go on. So I'm assuming we'll get an update from Ron right after his meeting. Well, oh, I mean, the, the no. thing, 2025, their fiscal year is, really April. is, okay. is July, you know, July 1. So there's still a big difference between starting it in July, you know, versus starting it in January. So like that, and, and this is just one of those things when, when you hear from other towns that you never would have heard from, like Goshen, saying that this is really important to them because they had an officer that had to sit at the side of the road waiting for backup when he pulled someone over at night for 40 minutes waiting for the state police to get there from the um, from the Shelburne barracks and they had to take the long way down and then 116 all the way through Conway uh, um, to Waitley Road to yeah. whatever that that's like a, this is just something that's important to a lot of people and, I'm surprised um, it's not a bigger like McGovern that's that like his yeah, like, like, shows that he had on there. Um, this yeah. literally so, bridges so that's, yeah. that's why I put this on there because because uh, people just ask about it all the time well can and we attend that meeting with yeah. the mass dot meeting yeah is that appropriate for I, I don't know I don't even know um, I guess you didn't you didn't know the date yet you're allowed to, but if you want to, yes, you're allowed to. And I, my understanding is it's going to be in Shelburne, but um, could be wrong. I would also like to attend. Yeah. How about it? Anticipated 48 hours. Um, town administrator, I know she's been. Town administrator has been burning the burning the midnight oil this week, and uh, I'm not expecting an update from her as a result. Um, I was never expecting one ever, but um, but she's been giving ones every week. So uh, this week uh, we'll let her off the hook for sure. Um, anything else? Members com comments concerns. Yeah, I'm going to request that um, we put on the agenda for next week uh, a new vote for select board chair. Outside of the, I know that we that that's going to happen in June, but well, we're supposed to do yearly rotations, right? Um, that we go up there. Traditionally, decided yes. on. Yeah. Traditionally, I remember um, doing that vote. <laughs> I'm just going to request that we move that up. That's at the okay. discretion of the select board chair, of course, <laughs> to put that on the agenda, but. I have formally made my request. You did. Um, all right. Um, 
next meeting, executive session tomorrow. Yes. Five thirty tomorrow. That's um. Uh, with, that's with, with Donna. With right? Donna. So are we all on Zoom? Or are we all? Well, we'll, we'll be in uh, my office. Okay. All right. So that's all right. That's what we're doing. Um. And the Wednesday one is rescheduled because of personnel committee. Is that correct? Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Wednesday's personnel, and then Thursday's grammar school. And right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.